Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Chris and getting uh, more done on the 1855 project. And I'm going to reseal all these valves. We've got the base block that bolts on the, the uh, hydraulic housing. Not too much going on there. I'll probably go ahead and put a new O-ring on that O-ring boss just to be safe. And there's an O-ring on the back side and that's about it. And I guess there's seals on the that uh, valve thing. Um, end plate, nothing going on there really other than O-rings. And uh, we're going to start with the inside valve. And the reason it's inside is this is a float valve. And for it to work properly, it has to be the one closest to the hydraulic unit, remote number one. And so, and it's simpler than these other detent style. So we'll start with that. Also, the other thing was, uh, this was a two valve uh, tractor before. I got another valve off from eBay. So now it's gonna be a three. According to the book, it is not possible to have three valves on a tractor with ROPS, but I've seen it done and I measured it, it will fit. The problem is you gotta get them on before you put the ROPS on, because once that's on, there's not enough room to do anything. So if you ever have to service them, you have to pull the ROPS off to do it, but it is possible. So let's get at it. I guess it works. Someone had a cotter pin as a, a connector for the lever. Whatever. I guess we'll have to try to find an original one of those. Although it did work. Let's see, we'll get the uh, these two Allen headed bolts out of here. And it's not that size. Looks like maybe 3 16 Hope you're seeing that. Clean that baby up. So much crud in there. I think there is a stamp ring. Or is it a nut? I'm gonna go wash this up some now that I got that cover off the back. Alright, it's definitely a I've got a uh no, oh, it's just a nail, but something to keep the uh spool from turning while I turn this out. These valves will work in other positions as far as uh, like our 4225 we've got um, we added a fourth valve and what we had on hand was a was a float so we stuck it in there and it works uh, it doesn't float because it's out in the fourth position instead of the first one but that's fine for what we use it for. Time for more trouble with springs. I guess I can, maybe. There we go. I do believe we can take the valve out the back way now. Something else, or the spool, I guess, out of the valve. Something else to consider is each of these is kind of a uh, Custom fit, machine fit, I don't know, custom machine fit, but um, it's not advisable to take a spool out of one valve and put it in another, just because the, the fit is customized that much. So uh, they always recommended if you had to replace the body or you had to replace the spool, you just got a whole new valve because of that custom fit that they were machined to at the factory. These are made by Cessna. I don't think that's any relation to the plane, but someone can correct me if I'm wrong. There is this plug here in between. It has some O-rings on it and it can leak. That one I was talking about on the Fort 225 started leaking. 
and all I didn't have to take the whole stack out but the two bolts on the bottom straddle it that groove right there and uh, that's what keeps it in place and so you got to pull the bottom two bolts but you leave the top ones in and you can pull this bull out and there's an o-ring on there that you know doesn't want to oops you can drive it in too far just like that and then it does have a groove in it so you can get a couple of screwdrivers on it there we go there's the o-ring that can uh, leak so you definitely want to change that out and then I do believe there's some the other thing you got to watch out for is these pieces falling out which it was like this the spring This is how they go, spring, and then this doohickey. And that's pretty much it. There's an O-ring in this end. Like I say, it's much simpler than the uh, detent style. As we'll see, that'll be another video. This one, I'm just going to uh, get O-rings out of an O-ring kit to repair it, because well, you only got like what? Um, three O-rings here. It's interesting. The back one's different than the front one. All right. I do believe that's that's a part already. So now I just need to clean everything up good, and we can go back the other way with new O-rings. I'm getting low on some of this stuff. This is the same o-ring I just used on the three-point hitch lever. Well, that's new. That is, that's not, that's not. And this was my last, what is this, uh, eighth inch cross section, five eighths ID. Seals the uh, spool. And I've made it all sorts of slippery and probably should have greased it after it was in there. Got the back one. This one was only 3.30 seconds. Try to get that in the groove. The old one don't seem that bad, but it's not gonna get any easier. slicing that baby I do have more of that one at least probably should have put the spool in gone a little farther stuck the back o-ring in so each one of these uh, cutouts is gonna cause it grief Then I have the same problem in the front. Now I found this in there. A thin slice of O-ring. Let's hope it this is this back one. It is. I can see right there. There. Okay, let's put some grease on it again. All right, pushed it back, spin it around. So if it cut any off this time, it'd be on this outer edge. 
So that is apparently the way to do it. Leave the back one out, get the spool in. The front one has a chamfer to it. Get it just in a little bit past and then uh, get the new ring in, then drive it back or tap it back. Here's hoping for the best. There we go. Then we just uh, thread this bad boy in there. Where'd my special tool nail go? Put it in the other end to keep the spool from turning. Slide that baby on. These are your, there's two up in there. They drill through. Let's just show that up close. See how much you can see. Four little tips sticking in there. Those are what catch that and uh, causes it to lock into the float position. We just need, there is a backup washer on here. So I got my fresh O-ring. The backup washer goes away from the pressure so that the O-ring is pushing against the uh, backup washer when there is pressure. Once again, some grease to help facilitate. Oops, I probably should put these parts in too. Let's see. Let's see if it's going to fall out like that. Yeah, of course it is. More grease. As I was saying before, the battery so rudely ran out I packed this with grease that should yeah hold it in you could always just flip the valve over like I said there's nothing to retain it other than the two bolts going through so like I was saying done that valve is pretty simple other than getting that spool through without cutting the o-rings there you go float cylinder or valve resealed ready for installation as always i appreciate everybody watching and i hope to see you in the next one